Lucel Mazrawi or Diogo Dalo, who will start at Manchester United in right back? Welcome to the United of Sport. My name is Webb. Here is a comparison of two players who coming come the next season will certainly be competing for a starting place in a crucial position for Manchester United. But first, before I get into that, let me first thank you for liking our videos, sharing them, and subscribing. Thank you for your comments, everything that you put, I see, and I appreciate it. And we can only get better as we count down to the season. Uh, but also, let me uh, first give you an update of what's happening with Nusal Mazrawi. Well, the latest is that he has already informed Bayern Munich that he wants to join Man United with immediate effect. He's ready to leave the Bayern Munich camp and go join his new teammates at Manchester United after Manchester United and Bayern come to an agreement on a fee. Well, what's holding them back? It is Juan Bissaka. He's not yet out of Man United, but West Ham is advanced. They are probably hoping to get him done maybe in the coming few days. So the question is when, not if, Nusal Mazrawi will become a Man United player. But people have been wondering if he comes in, what's the plan? Because initially, people were for Jeremy Frimpong. Many people were for Jeremy Frimpong being the guy United brings in. But clearly now it's not happening and Mazrawi is the chosen one. And uh, he's worked with Eric Ten Hag before and you cannot question him for trusting a player he has worked with before. But is he coming as the starting right back or will he be a backup to, uh, to, to Diogo Dalo? That's the multi-million dollar question. And I'm here to answer that for you. So well, I'll start off with uh, Diogo Dalo. Dalo, I think, was among the top four players that enjoyed the most minutes with Eric Ten Hag, with Man United in the last season. It was him, Bruno Fernandes, the captain, Alejandro Ganacho, and the goalkeeper, Andre Onana. They played the most minutes. It's not by mistake. It was a sign of how important they were. In fact, if you ask many a people, they will tell you that at Man United, across the entire season, probably Diogo Dalo was the most improved player at Man United. At some point, he was Diogo Dalo, a laughing stock. But later, I, especially when he saw an opportunity, Wan Bissaka, who was ahead of him, gets injured. He never turned back. Dalo gets his, his chance. And wherever he was put, he was putting in his best shift. Even when he was put to play on the left back, he tried to put in his best shift, contributing, of course, scored two goals, assisting four times, playing some night beautiful passes with confidence in the so many games he played uh, for Manchester United last, uh, last season because he played 36 matches, scored two goals and assisted three times. He, uh, that's in the Premier League. He was always a very determined, hungry player. There's one thing that stood out for me about Diogo Dalo. Probably his best match in the United Jazz was the Tottenham game at Old Trafford, where so many people were not so good. But Tottenham at Old Trafford, I was in the stands in that one. I really saw him play football like he has never uh, uh, played. I thought he was impeccable, getting balls off the feet of opponents. He improved in his 1v1 uh, you know, tackles. He improved in his decision-making, his game reading, his final ball, his crossing how he inverts himself to come and add to the midfield because teams today, Liverpool's, uh, Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool, they always wanted to have fullbacks, even uh, strikers come and add into the midfield at every one point when they have the ball to come and add to, to the midfield. We've seen, uh, we saw a lot of Trent Alexander-Arnold doing it, Robertson, and uh, Robertson with uh, Jurgen Klopp, even with Eric Ten Hag, he always wants to have one of the wingers come and add to the midfield. And when you have the ball, he's contributing an extra body in the middle. Diogo Dalo was impeccable at that. I've consistently said, if you ask me, if there's one player who understood and mastered how Eric Ten Hag wants to play in that very forgettable season, I thought Diogo Dalo was up there. He was that player. So I think for me, uh, he really put in a ring for himself. No wonder he has been chosen over Aaron Wan Bissaka, who was at some point ahead of him in terms of pecking order in that position. So that's progress. And again, reminds me of that interview that Cristiano Ronaldo dropped with Piers Morgan when he was asked about some of the young players he feels have the personality and, and character to excel at Manchester United. So for me, Dalo has those good attributes. Now, when I look at the new guy, Nusel Mazraoui, certainly not so many people have watched him play. But Mazraoui, first of all, has not played so many games at uh, Bayern Munich. Of course, like Dalo has played at, uh, at Manchester United. Last season, he played 19 games, the same number of games the season before that. And uh, he scored no goal, uh, 
and assisted three times. Now, Dalo, I told you, in 36 games, scored uh, two goals and assisted three times. So, uh, in terms of goals, that's not exactly how we judge these players. The assists, maybe. But uh, the thing with uh, uh, Sayo Mazrawi is, what I've noticed about his game is, uh, he's, he's, he's a, li a little bit more mobile in his style. I think he, he can also invert himself and add to the middle. He's mobile, but I also feel like he does the simple thing. He keeps it, keeps it uh, simple in terms of how he plays. He's not a fancy footballer who is trying to do so many nice things and look cool. He's a simple... He, he tries to do the basics, but also he's a good ball distributor. The other one ex exceeding, uh, extremely good thing about him is his ball distribution. Now, these are things that make him better than uh, Aaron Wan Bisaka. Do they exactly make him better than Diogo Dalo? I don't think so. Like I said about Dalo, he has improved in nearly all facets of a right back and most importantly, in the knowledge of how Eric Ten Hag, his boss, wants him to play. Now, we are talking of another player who Eric Ten Hag has worked with before at Ajax. And remember that Eric Ten Hag's uh, goal or, or target or objective or uh, his uh, uh, his uh, uh, KPI that he has been given by Ineos is to play good football, close to what he played with Ajax. Now we are talking of a player he worked, played with at Ajax, who knows exactly how they played and executed that football at Ajax. It gives him an advantage. But thinking of what Diogo Dalo has done and how he has been playing at Man United in the last season, and knowing the personality and character that Dalo is, we've seen him even before he joined the Man United uh, team. He's training every day and working hard. His mentality and attitude and now knowing that they're bringing someone who has worked with Eric Ten Hag before, you certainly expect him to work hard and step up his game. That's why I personally think that Diogo Dalo, even if these two are not so far off each other, Dalo is probably better, a little bit better defensively, but by and large, the whole package, I think Dalo will still have an edge over Nusal Mazrawi, despite them being almost close. So my thinking is Diogo Dalo will still start ahead of Nusal Mazrawi, but the two are close, and meaning that in the event that, for whichever reason, Dalo has got to be inverted to play on the left, because he can play there when maybe we're struggling to have a, the right left back in the team, Musa Mazrai will still man the right wing effectively. He will contribute uh, as well to our attack. He plays those deep passes from behind. He's a good ball distributor, probably slightly better than Diogo Dalo in terms of ball distribution, by the way. So, but uh, by and large, the whole package, I think, and I, may, I expect Dalo to improve on uh, in so many of these facets, facets as well in the, for the coming season. So, but also, if Eric Ten Hag chooses to rotate, I don't think there will be a golf in quality, a golf in, you know, in levels. I think these two are close to each other. So it's going to be a tighter competition between the two that inadvertently will make both of them better. And again, that makes the team better and gives us more depth in the team. So that's my honest opinion. But uh, who do I think will be starting? I still think Diogo Dalo will be the first priority of the right backs. So Mark is coming in more as a backup than the main guy. In my uh, uh, an, an analysis uh, based on how I see the two. Give me your uh, opinion yourself and I'll, 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 go, I'll, I'll dive into it. Uh, so just to wrap up the other stories around United, there are reports that are claiming that uh, Man United are now looking back at the other options in the middle, the likes of the likes of Man of PSV, the likes of uh, Zubimendi, as if they are almost giving up on Manuel Ugate. Uh, these are baby reports that are emerging. They are developing reports. Not that I should completely write them off, but I don't think United can afford to give up, uh, to give up on on Ugate. They do need Manuel Ugate more than probably anyone because the biggest reason, in fact, I consistently said the reason why Andrew Nana was overly exposed even the backline was because they, for the most part of the season, we didn't have the right shield in the middle, the right uh, number six. Ugate is such an important signing for Manchester United, and I don't think 
they will be you know looking to mess it up and you know just play with it so i expect uh, them to proceed and uh, and find ways of finalizing the deal with paris saint germain who are advanced in their pursuit of joao neves and soon it is going to be officially of course done actually they have already signed the paperwork and what so i expect something to happen tomorrow when it comes to manuel lugati honestly and manchester united but that's it uh, from me of course there is more we expect scott mctominy the elite is saying he's not under pressure he's still waiting on man united he knows something will be done and sorted uh he's turning down he's turning down any other connections to any other clubs he's focused on manchester united and uh I, I, I think we shall get him as well. So Ugat and Delete for me, I lucky honestly feel we will get them. Probably by the start of next week, I will be here to give a proper view of the entire starting 11, as uh, like I think it will be come next season with most of our key signings in. So that's my honest take. This is the United of Sport. My name is Webb. Like, share, and do subscribe. And let me catch you again next time.